welcome back to the channel um i'm a little on the brownie high <laughs> i woke up this morning like i'm not gonna work out i'm just gonna eat brownies so i went to a bakery and um did a little sketch um, of da -da -da, um my bakery um yeah it was fun um I always feel it's useful to put on a hat so people don't think you are staring them down. Um, got in the chairs, got in the pastry shel shel shelf right here. Um, I thought maybe I'd show you how I would color this digitally. Um, all right. But before that, I'm going to do a quick little Bible study. Um, let's read. John 4, one of my favorite chapters, um, John 4. Now when Jesus learned that the Pharisees had heard that Jesus was making and baptizing more disciples than John, although Jesus himself did not baptize, but only his disciples, he left Judea and departed again for Galilee. And he had to pass through Samaria. So he came to a town of Samaria called Sychar, near the field that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there. So Jesus, wearied as he was from his journey, was sitting beside the well. It was about the sixth hour. A woman from Samaria came to draw water. Jesus said to her, Give me a drink, for his disciples had gone away into the city to buy food. A Samaritan woman said to him, How is it that you, a Jew, ask for a drink from me, a, Sam a woman of Samaria? For Jews have no dealings with Samar Samaritans. Jesus, Jesus answered her, if you knew the gift of God and who it is that is saying to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, sir, you have nothing to draw water with and the well is deep. I don't know why she's suddenly a valley girl. <laughs> that might be funner. <laughs> Where do you get that living water? Are you greater than our father, Jacob? He gave us the well and drank from it himself, as did his sons and his livestock. Jesus said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks of the water that I will give him will never be thirsty again. The water that I give him will become in him a spring of water, welling up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I will not be thirsty or have to come here to draw water. Jesus said to her, Go, call your husband and come here. The woman answered him, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, You are right in saying I have no husband for you have had five husbands and the one you now have is not your husband what you have said is true the woman said to him sir i perceive that you are a prophet our fathers worshiped on this mountain but you say that in jerusalem is the place where people ought to worship jesus said to her woman believe me the hour is coming when neither on this mountain nor in jerusalem will you worship the father you worship what you do not know we worship what we know for salvation is from the jews but the hour is coming and is now here where the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father is seeking such people to worship him. God is spirit and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to him, I know that Messiah is coming, he who is called Christ. When he comes, he will tell us all things. Jesus said to her, I who speak to you am he. Cool. Okay, guys, so here is my Miro board. Um, Miro is just like a program that um, artists, UI artists, um, product development people, they could use to reference their, um, reference other sources for inspiration. Um, they could also use it for like um, team, um, team building. Uh, meetings or um, what we call like sprint work which is like um, like a two week or longer uh, time frame that you can create work so um, I like to make my own personal account just so that I could um, put my reference in so you don't have to like print things like traditionally out in a on your board or your wall to paste things um, you just zoom in and out really well um, to the left I have images from architectural digest um, which is like a magazine that has like really great interiors um, like here's like a hello kitty 
couch with like a huge bow. Um, I'm looking also at like color schemes, um, like these really like classy looking uh, high ceiling pillars. Um, even this one where it's just like a very creepy, <laughs> surreal painting um, or these like really fun uh, cup columns. To the right, I have um, some inspiration for faces. Um, one of the artists I really love is Joanne Nam. Um, one of the things she says like um, really like stuck with me. She's like, I wake up at four in the morning to paint. <laughs> and I'm like, dang. But she's like, I don't even need coffee because um, I'm just so inspired and like motivated. And that always stuck with me because um, I always like, wish I had that feeling that like if I'm so um, inspired I don't need like um, external like um, things like like brownies or like coffee to you know get me going you know like just like that inspiration or that purpose um, keeps you moving um, throughout the day um, so yeah here's my mural board um, and yeah of course you could make your own um, personal account too um, this um, on the sidebar, it's not quite loading right now, but on the sidebar there usually is things where if you're working with another team, you could like annotate, you could like put arrows and sticky notes in, be like, hey, I love this lip couch, or like, um, hey, you know, like paint the eyes like this, you know? So definitely a very useful tool for any type of work. So I'm gonna go into my Photoshop here. Um, my windows are all over the place, so please forgive me. Um, on my left, I here have my brushes palette. Um, the top, I have my path, which I'm just using as like a perspective guide. Um, like what I showed you in one of the tutorials. But right now, we're doing it digitally, right? Um, and I have it as a layer. So what I did was I, I made these with the pen tool, like right here. And then um, I just did like stroke path. And then I put the... Um, the perspective lines as a layer right here. So I'm gonna turn that off and show you what that is. So um, my line work is what I plopped in from earlier this morning. I put it at a, um, what you call a multiply layer. So if it was a normal, you would see like the white of the paper, but when you put it on multiply, you could just see the black lines through. And I, um, from 100% opacity, I kind of dragged it down. So I'm looking more at the color. Um, put in that creepy painting on the right, <laughs> just for funsies. Um, have my little color scheme down here. Um, let's see, I thought I had another layer up here, but um, let's make one really quick. I'm gonna duplicate that. And then I'm going to image adjustments, hue saturation. I'm gonna lighten it and uh, desaturate, maybe even shift the hue a little bit. Cool, so kinda doing this kind of uh, palatial <laughs> interior um, as my bakery. So I just first started with um, putting in the tabletops. I think that communicates the perspective the most and the bottoms of the stools um, put in that rack for the bread um, I always add like a trim um, and uh, when it's like on the bottom like if I if I drew in like a um, bottom trim uh, I think it's called a Wayne Scott um, that kind of defines the corner of a room which helps Label this wing, Scott. And then put in a color for it. Let's see. Um, of course, it should be affected by the light here. So I'm gonna. This is my lasso tool. I use it to select the colors and the paint tool to fill in. Um, this color, I might. Put in a little more blue in there. And then um, I'm gonna grab my photo. 
um, that I got from the cafe on my phone and then try to hash out some of these stools. Um, trying to decide. I might just use a pen tool to get in some of these uh, stool shapes. Let's see. Yeah, so just reading um, that John 4 passage. Um, I once was in a church and the pastor gave a pretty good sermon about how um, the Samaritan woman at the well, she just kind of represents a, like, it's almost like an every woman, you know, like, you know, are you defined by society, how society perceives you, or are you defined by um, uh, if you're a true worshiper of God kind of thing, like um, society's like, oh, um, well, in the past, it was like crazy, right? Like, you probably like only have power if you are uh, married, if you're in a rich uh, family um, and and uh, whether it was this woman's choice or not she was she was like um, trapped in that um, position and um, had to have like five husbands or um, one of them wasn't her current husband you know um, so I think that's something that like is <laughs> if it was girl talk it'd be like oh my gosh you don't need a man <laughs> I mean whether you're married or not like it's like your ultimate value is um, your relationship with Christ kind of thing um, and I think that's something I have to remind myself constantly um, especially when I'm like Oh, I don't really want to read the Bible right now. Like, I feel busy or like um, doing my own thing, you know. Uh, okay, sorry. Back to this um, chair. Um, so I have it like stroked with a pen tool. Um, now I'm going to do stroke path. And then um, it just strokes it with a brush. So, um, whatever brush width I have here, which is a circle, is gonna define that chair. Um, obviously that's way too bright, so I'm gonna color it down with like um, a red. Okay. Then, I'm going to, it's a little hard to, decipher what I did this morning <laughs> with these stool tops. Let's see. Okay. This stool was more front facing, so I don't like that. Definitely like um I know I've had a request from my friend Jay, Miss Jay, to do a bakering baking um video. Thing is, I just follow the recipe. I'm like super, <laughs> super dumb in the kitchen. <laughs> Stool too. And then, uh, okay, this side. So these stools have like a bend to them, right? So I'm going to try to complete that a bit. But hopefully I'll get a stool that I could like repeat so I don't have to draw each one. I'm going to... I'm gonna put the stool back a layer here so then I don't 
get too confused. Um, so these are more the smaller stools in the back. I'm gonna put a little darker color here and make sure that the brush is a little thinner so then it's a smaller stool in perspective, right? Okay. And then, uh, let's see. Um, and to shrink your brush, you can um, use the dash, it's like the square brackets, sorry, the square brackets on your keyboard help to enlarge or shrink your brush. So you're not constantly like going to the toolbar to change it. So, got a stool. <laughs> it's kind of hard to tell how the stool, but I'm just gonna put a front leg here. Stroking that, and then also remembering that these are in perspective, so um, where the legs meet, they should kind of recede to some some point in the distance. I'm gonna turn on my perspective guide here, um, just to line it up with the grid. It doesn't have to be perfect, but fill that in so that this leg is behind um, and I am doing this with a mouse <laughs> I'm super lazy today <laughs> um, I have this move tool turned on with the auto select at the top left corner so every layer I, every uh, part of the image I click should snap to the layer which helps in okay I'm pretty happy with this tool. I'm gonna try to duplicate it then. Um, I think I should combine this stool legs with the seat so it's a unit. So that's a seat. I'm gonna combine it with this stool. And yeah, there we go. Okay, I'm gonna. I turn off this so then um, if I select anything in the scene again, it won't snap to anything, right? Because I'm right now I'm just duplicating this to make extra chairs. I'm gonna darken each one successively so they just pop. Um, like that. Okay. And um, I could have gone the other way, like gone lighter as I gone to the front, but right now I'm just trying to create the props in this image. Um, maybe I could do with the other table too, but I think the chairs are a little wider perspective here so I don't wanna um, actually maybe I can bake it and just stretch it so I'm gonna grab these three stools stool group I'm gonna duplicate it and I'm going to try to warp it into place for this other table Okay. Not 
sure if I like these as a foreground. Just kind of too, too many lines. <laughs> I'll turn that off for now. I'm going to put in the back shelves here. There were like two dudes sorting bread at the cashier. <laughs> And okay. try and just figure out where that cabinet meets the bottom. I think it's like somewhere here. Let's see. So that's the side cashier table. I'm gonna put this lower in my uh, hierarchy of layers, um, just trying to keep it as organized as possible for now. Um, I'm gonna stick with a blue color, just to, um, I guess, make the red stools more of an accent color. Okay. And then add a tabletop. Um, this guideline I put down is my horizon line where all of the lines recede. So um, I'm just keeping that in um, in my memory while I draw things. I think right here is where um, the counter lowers. to add the shelf. I think it has like a little, I'm just gonna make it kind of like art shaped here. Like an arching one. Like that. Um, and I'm gonna try to stroke it and then add a glass within. case lines. I'm going to stroke stroke path. So now I have a display case frame and I'm going to add in I'm going to lasso in the um, okay window. I'll call it display window. I'm going to put in City. Um, this might have a glow if it was a display case. So maybe I'll like bake it and put like a light. Um, and then. lines, turn off my perspective. I'm gonna cut up, crop the chair legs just to clean things up. Okay. Yay, I 
feel happy already. Like, kind of got the base of things, sense of interior. Um. Yeah, like, um, I think uh, all I need to do is maybe add like some shadow into the table. I have this idea of putting like a huge sloth in there. <laughs> um, like the sloth being me, like, like she's just like eating at a table, like, just being like super gross like that that's how I felt this morning <laughs> I'm gonna do like a um, huge sloth face <laughs> um. Here's my arm. Let's get it darker. <laughs> this is how I feel like at <laughs> seven in the morning. <laughs> I just made it darker because it's under the table. <laughs> the circle tool here. Oh. I feel like everything I, every creature I draw kind of just looks like my dog. <laughs> like this furry white angry thing. <laughs> Shoving, um, shoving croissants into her mouth. Sans. <laughs> okay, um, I don't know, maybe someday I'll have like um, a video of my keyboard to show, you know, what I'm doing with each keystroke because I found that um, sometimes it is I get it like sometimes it is super unhelpful when I see a teacher do stuff especially when you're like learning 3d um, where like what five keys did he just uh, press to get there ah. actually don't know did I say sloth I think I think I was thinking of a Yeti this whole time. Sorry. <laughs> I blamed the brownie this morning. I don't know how his eyes should be. Oh dear. Oh dear. Okay. 
Um, the reason I, I got all that reference for Joanne Nam was to actually paint a character, like a person, but I guess it's a sloth right now. I mean, it's not a sloth, sorry. A yeti. I'm even labeling it sloth, like a yeti. Yeti, yeti, yeti. Okay. Make it, make her even chubbier and lovable. I don't like how she blocks that shelf though. Maybe shrink her just a little bit. Maybe put her on that table. Actually, yeah, maybe she should belong there. Put her behind the table here. And then put um, our painting behind that. I love it already. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm pretty happy. I think I'm at a good stopping point for for now. Um, yeah, um, thank you for watching and I'll talk to you soon. Bye guys.